Hey yo, my name is Kayo, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you're not, welcome back. In today's video, I'll be going over cross-site scripting, what it is, how to find it, and how to exploit it. Cross-site scripting, also known as XSS, is counted among the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities for web applications. XSS is an injection attack where malicious JavaScript is injected into a web application and gets executed by other users. Attackers take advantage of this vulnerability to conduct malicious activities such as session stealing, keylogging, and even port scanning. Session stealing is when an attacker can steal cookies from an authenticated session and gain access to login tokens that will allow them to log in as the victim. With keylogging, an attacker can log everything you type on your browser, including login credentials and banking details, and send your keystrokes to their own server. In some cases, it's even possible to identify other hosts on an internal network. Reflected cross-site scripting is when an attacker gets their payload to execute within another user's browser. These types of attacks are made possible when user supplied data in the HTTP request are included in the web feature source without any validation. Say for example, there's a web application that lets users search for items in a store. You enter in the word table into the search box. After doing so, the application makes a request similar to the following. Upon reviewing the source code of the page, you notice the application has included the user supplied search term, in this case table, in the web page's source. Assuming that there is no input validation or processing being applied to the data, an attacker can replace the term with malicious JavaScript code. For example, instead of entering table into the search box, they enter the following. After entering in the JavaScript payload, if the application is indeed vulnerable to XSS, just like with the first search, the payload will be included in the source and the JavaScript will execute, causing an alert box containing the string of text XSS to pop up on the page. You may be wondering why this is considered dangerous. Keep in mind that the value entered into the search box is also the value of the URL parameter. So if an attacker were to copy the link, including their payload, and email it to many different people in a phishing attempt, whoever clicked that link will have the code executed within their browser. Later on in this video, I'll be giving you a brief overview of stored XSS. For now, I'm going to demonstrate what a simple reflected XSS attack might look like. I'm going to be using the intentionally vulnerable OWASP broken web application to demonstrate how to test for reflected XSS using Burp Suite and some JavaScript code. I've selected the BWAP application and I'm going to create a new user. After creating a new user, I'm going to log in with the security set to low. I've set the current bug to reflected cross-site scripting via the HTTP POST method. Assuming the proxy is already configured for your browser, Turn Burp Suite's intercept on and enter in a value for the first and last name. As you can see, Burp Suite has successfully captured our output. Now I'm going to change the input values of the first name and last name to JavaScript code meant to cause a pop-up containing the message, this is reflected XSS to appear.
I'm now going to URL encode the payload to make it safe to send. This is done by selecting our first name and last name value and using the shortcut Control U. Now it's time to send our request by pressing the forward button. After turning Burp Suite's intercept off and returning to the BWAP application, you can see that an alert box appeared with our message. The reflected XSS attack was a success. And there you have it. That is the concept for reflected XSS attacks. Stored or persistent XSS, unlike with reflected XSS, does not execute within a single user's browser. Instead, the attacker's payload is stored on the web application itself, such as in a database, and is thus executed every time a user visits the web page. Because these types of attacks are self-contained within the application itself, the attacker doesn't need to trick a user into making a request containing their exploit, such as through a phishing attempt. Different methods of exploitation may be needed depending on where the controllable data appears and what type of input validation is being done. Most websites have measures put in place to make sure that user data is only ever displayed but never executed. Common forms of XSS defenses that websites use include HTML entity and attribute encoding, URL encoding, JavaScript encoding, and CSS hex encoding. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click the like button if you learned something new and subscribe to learn more.